Yo, what's poppin' guys? Welcome back to another Scratch tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to um, make clones have a separate amount of points or a separate amount of health. And what I mean by that is, for example, if you if you're ever playing a zombie game on Scratch or any game with zombies, pretty much in general, uh, what they normally do is they'll create a clone of the zombie so that they don't have to make multiple sprites and it doesn't, you know, clutter up your sprite place. So what the, the goal is, is like, this thing will create a clone. So let's just say this is the zombie. They'll hide the zombie, right? And then they'll create a clone uh, somewhere in the sprite. And then when they start the clone, they'll show, right? And then they'll like go to, to a random position, right? Like this. And then this is how the zombies or whatever the enemies are would spawn just like this right and then they obviously start having their own script where they might like move towards the player um, but you realize that if you were to put um, for example let's say okay let me just start actually I'll, I'll, I'll explain as I go we're just gonna make a zombie uh, zombie character or maybe just just so, just some random thing I realize my drawing tablet sounds instead of the keyboard that's that's why the buttons weren't working that'd probably do it wouldn't it all right so we're going to just make like a little circle and this will be our enemies. Let me just fill him in red because you know that's the classic color of an enemy. And we're just gonna call him enemy. All right, now watch this, okay? So let's say when this sprite clicked forever, wait two seconds, create clone of yourself, right? Create clone of myself. So every two seconds when the green flag is clicked, this will create a clone of itself. So what I want to do is hide the original one, right? So you'll start with nothing and then I'll start creating clones. When you start as a clone, you'll show, and since it's under when I start as a clone, only the clone will show. Java, get out of here. Only the clone will show. The enemy sprite itself will never show unless you put it in a, in a script that is not under when I start as a clone. Okay? So like if you were to put a show here, oh, a show right there, after two seconds after the clone was created, look at this. So two will spawn because that one, th this is the original. I'm guessing the other clone spawned, but since I didn't have it to a position, it spawned right over top of it. But yeah, so it spawned both of them here. I'll, I'll do this just so I can show for an example. Now, nah, boom. All right. There it puts two. One of these is the clone. I'm guessing this is the clone. And then that's the original one, because I can move this one around. I mean, I can move these other ones around, but this one is the original, because when I hit start, or I don't know where the original one is. Oh, it's because I keep hitting that. It's that one. <laughs> okay. I hit the green flag instead of the uh, stop. All right. So now we understand how hiding of a sprite and, and a sprite's clone works. Now, let's say we have a game where uh, there's health, right? The enemies have health. So you realize if you make a sprite called enemy health, right? And then under here you go, when I start as a clone, forever, if, and you you set up something so that when this thing is clicked, touching mouse pointer and mouse down, which is the equivalent to having your mouse over the thing and then clicking it. Um, so it's the same thing as when the sprite clicked, but we're not clicking the sprite, we're clicking the clone. So if you want to click a clone, it's, it's that. So then you'll change health. So let's say when it's, when you start as a clone, you'll set the health to three. It takes three clicks to kill the enemy, right? So then you'll change enemy health by negative one, right? And then, and then also in here, if, grab yourself a, this thing, low, great, less than, if enemy health is less than one, which in this case, anything below one, so zero, if it ever hits zero, then you will delete the clone. Right? It seems like the script would work, right? You start playing, you start clicking the clones, and they start disappearing one by one, right? But watch this. So one pops in. Pretty easy, right? I'm realizing I need to add a little bit of a wait time in there. So you can't just, so like, you can't just hold down the mouse. Oh my goodness. Let's do like a 0 0.5 wait time between each click.
My goodness. Ba, 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 ba. All right, we need to even make that a little shorter, actually, now that I think about it. All right, there we go. Let's try that. So we got boop, boop, boop. Let's wait from. See, it, it works, right? You get three clicks. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. So you get three. Now let's just have a have a few spawn in. Oh, now we're starting to get a little overwhelmed because there's a bunch of enemies everywhere, right? So you start clicking, but then they all disappear, even though you only clicked one. Why does it do that? You, I, I don't understand why it's doing that. You you ask, Deku, how do I fix this? Please tell me how to fix this actual big problem. If you have a if you're having a game where there's a bunch of enemies, and you're cloning them, this can be a real problem. So let me show you how to fix this. <clears throat> It all lies within the variable. So I'm going to delete this variable and I'll make a new one called enemy health. And all you need to do is make sure you create this underneath the enemy sprite. So like, don't be in a different sprite. Make sure you're under enemy sprite. Make sure enemy sprite is selected. Then hit variable, type it in whatever you want. I'm just going to do enemy health and then hit for this sprite only. When you hit for this sprite only now, um, when you make now when a new variable is set, it'll set that variable for that specific sprite, or in this case, our specific sprites clone. So now we'll set the enemy health to three. And then if enemy health ever is less than one, delete the clone. Now let's go and look at it. All right, we got one there. We got one there. One there. Now you realize that's not going down. And the reason why, I can actually explain that to you. Because I forgot to do this. <laughs> Don't judge me. Shut up. Uh, I forgot to do that. <clears throat> Shut up. Alright. <clears throat> My goodness. Okay, so they start spawning in. You can get rid of them. Pretty easy to keep up. Right? Yeah, I think it's pretty easy. Now let's have a few of them start coming in at once. And again, we're getting a little bit overwhelmed. There's, a, there's quite a few guys on the screen right now. They're, they're going to come and kill me pretty good. So you click one and now look, now that you've done that with the variable, now you have to click in each individual sprite. The reason that one did that is because they were overlapping each other. My mouse was on both of them at the same time. But yeah, look at that. Now you have multiple clones of one sprite that each have their own individual amount of health. Now, I don't know what this will actually show. Yeah, it doesn't actually show anything that's changing here, but you can see that this, this, this little script is, is working. And there we go. That is the basic design for how to have, you know, your thing having individual, you know, stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's for, so that was the tutorial on how to have your sprites clones have individual amounts of health. If you wanted to make like a tower defense game, a sort of long survival game. Or just a game like this, some random game that I just threw together really fast. We're gonna name that like we always do. We always do. we always name the tutorial something interesting. Um, clone health to tutorial. There we go. Look at that. All right. Now I'm just gonna put in some stuff. We have a message. All right. Now I'm gonna put in some stuff. Instructions. Click the enemy uh well, no well, everyone could, yeah click the enemies and en en enemies enemies i can't spell <laughs> shush enemies to make oh make them go away there we go now we have a full working game that works perfectly with no flaws at all. It's just amazing. We did such a good job designing this game. I congratulate you guys. I, I truly do congratulate you. You, did, you guys did such a good job. Um, I'll put the stuff the link in the video, which if you're watching the video, you don't even need the link because you're here. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I hope you are too. Anyways, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, then like it. If you didn't like it, like it anyways, because um, because we have these. If you didn't watch the scratch announcement video, go watch it. I'll explain it in more detail a little bit. Uh, but I have this thing, DK University Tutorial Dump. Put your tutorials in there. Put your YouTube link. 
to the video where you did the tutorial or if you didn't just put your tutorials in here and put like some comments in the script and stuff so that other people can watch more tutorials that aren't just mine don't put other people's tutorials in there that's a scummy move don't do that um, and then there's another one right over here you see uh, called game requests in on the DK minigame account that's where you put your games put your games that you really want to see me play I'll play three of them every Monday and yeah post just one a week just because I don't want to get flooded but yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll, you know, see you in the next one. Peace. I said peace. Didn't end the video. It's like a doofus.